Hello there. My name is Carl Sanders. Welcome to this chapter. Horizons. Exploring the universe. I was traversing the vestibule of academia yesterday when a young student walked up to me and asked, What, sir, is the reason for the seasons? My first thought was to simply reply, Well, what do you think the reason for the seasons is? Then I began to wonder if this was a puzzling mystery which haunted many students. The many misconceptions of old wives' tales, obscuring simple facts like a great nebula of the collegiate conscience. And I concluded that, thus, a keystone tale in the study of the cosmos, requiring a deeper understanding, the, a reminiscent, if you will, of the facts. So I hereby dub this segment the reason for the seasons. Here we see the Earth as it would appear in the winter solstice. The Earth is tilted on its axis exactly 23.5 degrees away from the Sun, if your point of view is from the northern hemisphere. As the Earth tilts away from the Sun, the curvature of the Earth causes the sunlight to diffuse or spread out across the Earth's crust leading to a decrease in light intensity and a lowering of surface temperatures. The sun appears to linger in a lower altitude and for a shorter amount of time. This brings me to the first common misconception requiring clarification. It is the angle of the tilt which precipitates the changing climate, not the distance between the sun and the earth. In fact, the point of our orbit in which we find ourselves closest to the sun known as perihelion, occurs in early January, the coldest time of the year for the northern hemisphere. The point at which Earth travels furthest from the sun, known as aphelion, occurs in July, the time at which the lemonade and suntan lotion market reaches its peak. Hi, Dylan. Oh, straight from the cold. As you can see, the Earth has tilted on its rotational axis toward the sun. As the northern hemisphere experiences summer solstice. The sunlight beats down almost directly on the northern latitudes. The beams of light strike the crust and are confined to a very concentrated area, thus generating increased surface temperatures. As seen in this image, the Earth oscillates through a full 47 degrees every six months. The sun's intense rays first roast one end of the planet, pass over the equator, which maintains their intensity in this area year-round, and then the other end, the great rotisserie chicken of the cosmos, if you will. As the Earth continues to travel along the celestial equator, it crosses an important point known as the autumnal equinox. This is also known as fall, and there are beautiful colors of leaves and wonderful Indian beans. Again, the Earth crosses the celestial equator at a time known as the vernal equinox. This is the time of spring, where there are children laughing, looking for Easter eggs, and enjoying life. This pale blue dot is all we have, the only viable space we can conceivably call home. Hopefully, this bit of instruction will aid you in beginning exploring the enormity of space in search of <laughs> cosmic answers to questions like who are we and why are we here?